The information and opinions presented in this podcast are based on research done at a particular point in time. The fields of medicine, surgery, psychology, etc. are constantly evolving as new studies and movements happen. Please take into account the year of any particular episode's publication, and as new information presents itself, we will do our best to release updated episodes on the topics. Listener discretion is advised for references to medical terminology of body parts. Unless otherwise stated, no one speaking on this podcast is a medical or legal professional and cannot provide medical or legal advice. Welcome to the Trans Field Guide. Please welcome on the show Anjali Rimi, one of the founding members of Parivar. Thank you for coming on the show. You're very welcome. Can you give my audience kind of an overview of what Parivar is about? Absolutely. I think we are all strangers from a different shore. And while I had been in this world uh, for a while, for a minute, I have been also very much been one who has led a lot of travel in my life. And one of the big things is I've traveled a lot in many countries and always trying to find home, trying to find family. So uh, as I came to the Bay Area and settled down, um, you know, I started realizing there's an intersectionality um, that has a lot of margins and those are left behind. Um, So Parivar emerged from that need to look between the intersections um, that are usually popular or usually in mass. And usually when you're a critical mass, you get lost in the overall. So Parivar came about as a vision um, to do awareness building uh, around South Asian culture, but within the lives of LGBTQ+. Um, It started with uh, three of us uh, being approached by a large nonprofit foundation in San Francisco to do a three-night series on building South Asian queer trans awareness. While we did not know how big of a hunger or appetite the community had for it, um, the South Asian community as well as their allies, So that snowballed very quickly into us having a lot of members saying, we'll support you, please continue doing events, to doing social advocacy. So we are very new. We started in 2018 in terms of our vision, and we really got founded on January 26, 2019. But by the time we finished in 2019, we had done over 30 events. We started a support group, um, and we had over 300 members. So we started taking a lot of structure and really started realizing that there are interesting dynamics within this intersectionality as well. And the two things we really focus on at Parivar is to make sure that we are bringing together the entire South Asian diaspora, irrespective of where that South Asian person's origins are. The traditional way has been always that if you're South Asian, you're assumed to be Indian or Pakistani or vice versa. But not every South Asian is Indian or Pakistani, but every Indian and Pakistani is South Asian. South Asians are everywhere in this world. Ethiopia to Armenia to Alaska, they're everywhere. So we really want to welcome and make sure that everybody is included within the South Asian diaspora. And the second and more important embodiment we have done is that it is trans and GNC centered. The South Asian queer movement was started by, was really um, the momentum and propelled to visibility and integration with the greater LGBTQ community by South Asia, by Hindu, cis, gay men. And that has prevailed as the DNA in every single organization that I know of as I was transitioning and I was growing up. So it is very important for me and for Parivar to uplift trans and GNC voices and be at the forefront of decision making, not on the fringes. So we really believe in those two pillars, and we've come to believe that beyond doing events, we should also build advocacy and structure. So we just recently formed our board, and we're continuing to do events and continuing to understand what our real purpose in the society is. We have really looked at doing our events to be a true um, 
meaning of what it means to come together as family. And I should have said that in the beginning, Parivar means family in Hindi, Hindi being one of the languages. And so we try and strive for any of our events to be very inclusive, as in we do not like to or try not to do any events at anybody's individual's home, because that is also part of the culture. You know, come over to my place, we'll have, we'll have a potluck. We want to make sure that everybody feels safe in a neutral space. We want to make sure that our, our events have a message. And that comes with us having a format where it is fun, dance, food, but there is a part around performances that are meaningful and are far, far, far focused in fighting, you know, xenophobia, Islamophobia, and uh, the regionalism that prevails. And we also want to make sure that we have panels and discussions. And most of these are un awkward conversations. One of our very first events uh, was um, talking about sex. Sex is not talked about even in our LGBTQ community. So that's been our format, but again, we have been invited to so many events that we've never said no and have continued to attend a lot of them. So what all is offered in the support group part? Um, the support group came about uh, as a discussion uh, in one of our WhatsApp groups where we really felt the need to not just come together as the quintessential LGBT organization that come together for a party, a dance, and then goes home. There's important dialogue that's supposed to be had. And with that approach, we started our, our support group, and it is primarily centered around QTGNB, South Asian folks. And it is a peer support group, so it's not professionals. And we are talking about, you know, a topic each week after making sure that everybody who's in the group is settled in, is able to check in and feel uh, comfortable. And it happens twice every month on the first and third Wednesday at the San Francisco AIDS Foundation, who has been one of our biggest supporters and partners. Do you foresee extending the organization to other areas or have you gotten any requests for that? We have gotten requests to extend it into Southern California and into the, the later part of Washington and East, uh, East Coast. But Parivar means family and all of us are in one family. It's not now ever before did we come together as one family. Um, but right now we are looking to build structure, understand, you know, how do we grow and scale. But absolutely, it's, a way, it's our vision to grow. You said you've had a lot of support from the nonprofit organization. What does the community's response look like? As I mentioned, um, you know, there has been this real absence in the greater LGBT landscape of the South Asian LGBT organization. Um, so when we arrived and when we showed up, we had a very warm welcome. But more importantly, we were involved. We were involved and included in many events, whether it's the Transgender Day of Disability, whether it is coming together for an advocacy around the um, atrocities that happen in India, uh, or it, if it was basically partnering and doing events. Uh, we have done events with the with Cal Shakes. We have done events with um, you know Third Eye South Asian Film Festival. Um, and aping, like making sure that we are growing and also standing for what our values are. And one of the aspects of that has also been really understanding what do we stand for and making sure that we are, you know, um, serving the purpose of existing rather than just existing. And the membership and members, as we call them, has been overwhelming, um, really very good. Uh, people want to support, people want to volunteer, and every time if there's an event, we have um, no no issues having us having attendance and such. But I would say there's also been a level of uh, knowledge building and capability building uh, for folks outside of the community um, that are really interested to ensure that this particular intersection, which is usually lost between both the API as well as the POC, intersectionalities. Do you have dates already set for the events this year? 
we do, but I, I mean, I would say, I mean, we plan, we planned out our entire event calendar for the entirety of the year. Okay. We did, a, we did, we looked at all the thirty events we did last year and understood whether we really should be, can we, um, going back to those events. We, did we have impact? And impact for us is not metrics around how many people showed up or such, but it's really have have we really intrinsically felt the impact? And so we planned out our entire year. Um, but at this point, I don't know how far we'd go. We'd have we are we had a launch party in April um, planned. We had our um, in May we were going to do the United uh, Asian American. Um, a uh, film uh, festival, which is not a film festival, but an arts festival in its 23rd year when we were the showcase uh, organization. So we had a lot of preparation happening for that. Um, we also had, um, you know, uh, going back to Strat, which is a part of Strat and Sprites Foundation and doing the same three nights we did last year. Um, and then, of course, Pride. We were planning to be in Pride and Transgender Day of Remembrance. And so we planned out the whole year, um, but at this point with coronavirus, I don't know what's going to happen. Is there somewhere online that people can find the event calendar? Um, that's a great point. Um, I'll segue a bit and say that Out in Tech had re- pick, as a, had selected as an as an organization to provide uh, complete web support and build as a website. Um, but unfortunately, it was just a week before coronavirus hit, um, and they're based out of New York. So that didn't happen. But we did have a page on there that was going to detail out all of our events. So the vision is there, and it will happen, but not at this point. We mostly try to put our events on Facebook. Okay. And for our members, we try to let them know ahead of time. How can people find the group on Facebook? We have a page as well as a account. Uh, that's Parivar S.A., as South Asian, as well as Parivar Bay Area. So if you find one, you'll be able to find the other. We are also on Instagram, Parivar Bay Area. And we are not on Twitter yet. Um, and we have our email that we primarily correspond with our other organizations and other members. Is there anything else either on this topic or other topics that you'd like to share with my audience? Yes. Um, I want to highlight... Uh, something that's very important um, in the sense of building community. Um, there is a perception that South Asians um, come with uh, with high level of education or come to this country to get educated. But that's, you know, that's one myth that needs to be, you know, taken away because there is all types of us coming to this country and trying to form, build lives. Some of us are undocumented. Some of us are, you know, PhD folks, but I think the the intrinsic Islam, the intrinsic transphobia and homophobia uh, is internalized too for the South. So it is a long journey for most folks to be able to accept themselves and then accept beyond that. Another aspect I would say is we uh, have to work on on our anti-blackness in the South Asian community. Uh, thanks to the 300 plus years of colonization that the most of the South Asian genre, if you think of it, you know, um, no other place in the world um, has associated itself to become an identity. We never say you're West, West Asian. You never say, you know, um, but the other, the only other word, we, I mean, we say American, but we never, that's, that's a country. We say Canadian. South Asian came about because the white man took people from that South Asian region, put them on ships to work on plantations and sugarcane factories to make whiskey or bourbon and put them in all other parts of the world. So we are South Asians that are everywhere. But unfortunately, because it's the white man who has driven our mindset, we still have a lot of colonized mindsets that we prevail with where, you know, um, fairness is still a big part of privilege in um, in most South Asian communities, looks, age, um, with, as with many other communities. So I think there's a huge aspect of ha- us having to decolonize our minds and be open to, you know, uh, every culture, every race, and nobody being beneath us or above us. 
And the, and the third part, I would say, is that um, this is, um, there, there has rarely been a South Asian LGBT activist. Um, and I have found myself in a very interesting position coming from corporate world, but really feeling the need to come out as a trans woman and to really build as, this aspect. So I would say, you know, that is um, absolutely true uh, in saying that, you know, there is a dynamic of us trying to fit, trying to belong. Um, where we can belong in our intersectionality of being South Asian and trans, like in my case, but then how do we also belong with the APIs and are not a second thought because we are Asian? How do we belong with the trans and GNC communities or the greater POC community because we belong there as well? Thank you once again for coming on the show. You're welcome. Like this episode? Tell someone about it. Have any questions or concerns, please feel free to send an email to transfieldguide at gmail.com. Also be sure to subscribe to keep up with the latest episodes. Stay safe and remember, I'm proud of you.